Hi, I'm Erin O'Leary with Around the World, and today I would like to present you with part two of Move to Berlin, how to find an apartment in the city. It is not easy, it is not fun, but it is possible. Now, before you get started on your apartment search, there's a couple of things that you probably want to already have in order. Uh, number one is you should already have a German bank account so you have a way to pay for your apartment. Uh, you should probably already have some money saved up in order to get an apartment here in Germany. And also you should prepare your documents. Now before we get into which kind of apartments and which districts and where to go and what you should be looking for and the prices and everything else, let's talk a little bit about something called an Anmeldung. Now, an Anmeldung is your registration form that is required for any kind of visa appointment to show that you are registered legally here in Berlin and that you have an apartment and a place to live. Uh, this is extremely important because many apartments, especially if you look for a shared apartment or you're sub-renting an apartment, something like this, most of the time they will tell you the Anmeldung is not available. So whenever you look for an apartment, this is something very, very important to look for to make sure that they will offer you the Anmeldung so that you can go to the next step of actually getting your visa to stay here in Germany. So let's talk about some of the important documents you will need in order to apply for an apartment. First of all, you should have a copy of your passport or ID. You should also have a copy of your work contract as well as the last three to six months worth of pay slips to show that you have consistent money coming in. Uh, this also might look slightly different for those who are freelancing or have recently received a job offer but haven't started working yet. Also, don't forget to include some recent bank statements to show that you have enough money in your account to pay both the deposit and the first month of rent on the apartment. Lastly, you should have a copy of your Schufa. This is basically a German credit report that you can request for free online. Uh, I've also included the link in the comments below so you can go ahead and click on that. There is also a paid version of this document, but other than it being expedited and a quality seal of approval, you won't actually gain that much. Also, when you go and fill out this form, I believe they ask for a copy of your ID uh, that you should probably have on hand when you're filling it out so you can easily upload that and send it off with your application. Now, there are two different kinds of apartments you could be looking for here in Germany. We have Vegas Wohnungsgemeinschaft. That's like your shared apartment. You would be living in a shared space with perhaps a few other adults around your age. So let's talk about the pros to these shared apartments. First of all, they are cheaper. They also have a lower deposit, usually maximum one month's rent at the beginning. They also offer more flexibility uh, regarding your contract. So it's a lot easier to come and go if you're not sure about your job situation or how long you're gonna be in Germany. They also offer the opportunity for you to meet new people and to have language exchanges and just to get to know people who are already living here in the city. As far as cons go, uh, there is a castings process. It's like an interview process where you have to go and meet your potential roommates and basically sell yourself. In addition, these shared apartments don't always offer you the Anmeldung or the registration. Also, you're on the lease as a sub-renter most of the time. You're not on the main contract, which of course can cause problems problems if for some reason your roommates decide that they don't want you to live there anymore. Also, you're sharing your space with a bunch of people, so you don't always know what their cleanliness habits are and what their partying habits are, etc. So this could also create some friction in the long run regarding your space and where you're living. However, perhaps you're coming here and you're looking to get your own place, whether that's one room place, a small studio, whether you're coming with a partner, perhaps you want a bigger place or you have kids and you want to get your own apartment, that's possible too. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons to having your own apartment. First of all, you are on the main contract, which is great. Also, you have your own space and privacy and you're not sharing it with anyone. It also often offers the registration or the Anmeldung and you have an unlimited contract almost always. This means you're not signing a one-year lease or a two-year lease. Usually your contract can just go for as long as you decide to live in the apartment. Regarding cons, however, there are much more upfront costs. Uh, you could be paying one month rent plus three months deposit. Not only that, but you will also have to pay the fees for internet, electricity, gas, depending on what is and is not included in your contract. Also, these apartments are often unfurnished, which means that you will have to spend a lot more money upfront to furnish your apartment. There is also less 
flexibility. So you are in a long-term commitment to this apartment, usually one or two years before you're able to quit the contract. And lastly, but it is a really big one, these apartments are hard to find. If you're trying to find an apartment in a top neighborhood in the middle of town at market value, it is going to be a very difficult find. There's also a third option when it comes to looking for an apartment here in Berlin. These are your temporary apartments. They're usually above market value, uh, but they also offer the registration form and come fully furnished. It's also a great option if you are looking for an apartment when you're not actually in Berlin, so you can go ahead and get set up and organized before you even step foot here in the city. You can find these apartments on websites such as Spot of Home or Wonder Flats. Uh, I've also included the links down below. Something else you should know is that they list apartments a little bit differently here in Germany. So for example, in the US, you might get a two bedroom place. Here, they call it by rooms. So you have like a one room apartment, which is like your studio apartment, or you have a two room apartment, but that two rooms could be two bedrooms if you want to make them two bedrooms, or it could be your living room and a bedroom, however you want to do that. Now let's talk a little bit about where you should be living in Berlin. There are 12 main administrative districts in the city. It's really important to take note of the administrative districts when you find your apartment because whichever district that you are in, that is the district office that you need to go to to register your apartment. I have also included a link for the Burger Amt in the description below. If you click on that link, you'll see this page here. Just scroll down until you find your district and then click on that. And you just have to scroll down to where you see Anmeldung einer Wohnung and click on that. And then you will see on the right hand side, Termin Buchen. When you click on that, you will see the appointments available. Also, just so you know, appointments are very hard to come by. Uh, new appointments are released every single day. It's ideal to get up early and check the website to see if any new appointments have been released. Now, let's talk about the layout of Berlin. First of all, there is a giant ringbahn, which basically means the circle train that connects the entire city. A uh, tip for your apartment search is that everything inside the ringbahn will be more expensive than anything outside of the ringbahn. A really great way to see if an apartment is located within the city center is to take a look at the zip code. Uh, all Berlin zip codes start with the number one, and the second number is usually a zero if it is within the ringbahn, and another number such as two, three, etc. if it is outside of the ringbahn. So it would be one, zero, two, four, seven, for something within the ring bond, uh, or it might be 13055 for another district that's just outside of the ring bond. Now, just as in any big city, one of the things you will hear most people complain about is the price of apartments here in Berlin. It's sad, but true. Yes, the prices are increasing. When I first came here and I got a room in a vacay, it cost me probably about 300 euros a month. Now I will be lucky if I get anything less than 450 euros a month for an all-inclusive room in a shared apartment. However, one really great thing about Berlin compared to other big cities is they do do a lot to try and maintain rent control here. One thing in particular is before you've even started looking for an apartment, I highly recommend you go and type in Mietspiegel. Uh, this is your rent price here in Berlin. Uh, I've listed a link down below. You can go ahead and click on that. There is a PDF file that you can download and it has all of the information for 2022. Uh, it tells you each district and the average cost of apartments in that district based on square meter. So you can go ahead and put that in a calculator and see if the price is actually within the range of what should be charged in that area. Some other things to keep in mind when you're looking at the apartment would be whether or not it's an old building or a new building, whether it's been recently renovated or not. One thing that happens a lot is foreigners will come here and they're so desperate to find an apartment that they will pay these ridiculously high prices to just get into a place. And that right there is the reason that the prices are being driven up so high here in Berlin is because more and more expats are coming to the city, more and more people are willing to pay these really high prices because it seems so much better than say New York or London or these other big cities where you would be paying well above what you pay here in Berlin. 
Also something to keep in mind is there is a huge difference between Vegas and your own apartment. The people who are offering rooms in a shared flat, they have usually been on these contracts for a very long time and once you get on a contract, uh, they can't actually legally raise your rent unless there are certain stipulations in place that allow them to do so. So some of these people who are offering rooms in their apartments to rent, they've been on these very old contract tracks for a very long time. This is why they don't always offer the ad mail them because they don't want their own rent to go up and the landlord can reserve the right to change the rent price if somebody new is coming on the contract. They're priced differently because the people who are living there are often including all of your utilities, your internet, everything else. So just trust your gut on this. What feels right to you? What are you willing to pay? Okay, one last tip for you guys before I set you free on your own apartment search. Make sure that you have some kind of short and sweet introductory letter about yourself, kind of like a cover letter that basically tells a little bit about who you are, uh, how long you've been here, uh, what your status is if you're a student, if you're working, and what your plans are long term here in Berlin. That could be really helpful in selling yourself when it comes to applying for apartments. If you have a trusted German friend, have them translate it for you, otherwise use a translator like DeepL. The reason I say to do it in German is honestly because they will respond to you faster. So even if you can't really speak the language, you will just be more likely to get hits and get people inviting you for a besichtigung or a visitation. So be sure to put that in German if you can. Also, it's a numbers game. So apply to as many apartments as you possibly can, uh, 30 or 50 apartments a day. I'm not kidding you. Just apply, apply, apply. Also, it would be really helpful if you take this little email and you personalize it just enough by adding the first name of whoever is in charge of the apartment that you're applying for. So I highly recommend getting as many applications out there as possible, giving yourself lots of time. Don't set your hopes super high on this one specific place. Also, if you know of anybody who's moving out, word of mouth is actually the very best way to find an apartment here in Berlin. Put ads on Instagram or Facebook, whatever it is, if you're looking for a place, get your name out there that you're looking um, and hopefully you'll find somebody who has a place that you can take over their rent. One last thing I didn't really touch on but I will just throw it out there. Beware of scams. Anybody who's asking you to transfer money before you've seen a place, anyone who's telling you they're not in Berlin and they will send you a key, any of this stuff, if it sounds too good to be true or it sounds a little bit sketchy or you haven't seen the apartment personally, do not follow through with it. Be careful, there are a lot of scams out there. There will be a lot of people trying to get your personal information, bank details, what have you. Be really careful about what information you give to people and that if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Okay, last but not least, if you have watched this entire video and you're thinking, Erin, I am more confused than I was at the very beginning and I have no idea where to start with finding an apartment in Berlin, then your last option is you could hire a relocation consultant to basically do it all for you. Yes, that will cost you a bit of money. However, they will take your hand, they will carefully walk you through the entire process, they will help you get registered properly, they will help you find an apartment that is to your standards and in your budget and what you're looking for. They will help you even with your visa appointment and everything else. I have listed a couple of links in the description below so you can go ahead and check those out if you're thinking, hey, I just don't want to do this by myself and I want somebody who is knowledgeable already on the ground in Berlin to help me through this process. That would be for sure your best option. If you would like to check out more, I have a whole bunch of links listed in the description below. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or share it with your friends who are looking to move to Berlin. Once again, I'm Erin O'Leary with Around the World and I wish you all the best on your apartment search. Thank you and have a great day.